Good morning, folks. It was really interesting to see how many people have actually deployed gRPC and the fact that you guys traveled the world for this particular event. Super exciting times. Uh, I'm going to be joined here uh, with my colleagues, Anoop, who is the uh, director in my team, handles network security, load balancer, so cloud service mesh. And then we're going to have a demo from Yushin, who's actually going to show you some of the great innovations that we can actually, you can actually leverage. Uh, so with that, I'm going to start with it's the dawn of an AI-first enterprise. Super exciting times. Very few times do we actually get to almost transform the industry, and we believe that inflection point is here today with AI ML infrastructure. I'm sure all of you are thinking about all the gen AI models, the models that you need to create, modernize your application, and I'm sure you're thinking about AI ML. You're not alone. Roughly about 66% of customers will be adopting multi-cloud are going to be adopting it for Gen AI, AI ML infrastructure that's going to be available. And out of that, like 66%, almost 80% of the customers that we actually talk to through a survey are going to be deploying Gen AI in the next three years. As you can see in the industry, applications are fundamentally transforming and leveraging the power of Gen AI to take it to the next level of interaction and user experience that we all expect. It is going to be a multi-cloud world, about 81% of our enterprises that we surveyed are going to be using multi-cloud and multi-cloud networking. And I'm going to talk about some of the great innovations that we've launched and that are yet to come that will make it simple, easy, and secure for all of you to establish and leverage the multi-cloud infrastructure. About 55% of the ones that we talked to that IDC shared are actually implementing multi-cloud. And we all understand how hard and how difficult it can be to have a multi-cloud strategy. A lot of this multi-cloud trend is driven by the fact that customers want to use best of breed managed SaaS services. So there might be managed SaaS services that GCP offers. Many of you want to be able to consume it even though your workload might be in any other cloud. Could be on-prem in a hybrid deployment. And we want to make that in a simple and secure manner. It could also be driven by the AI ML infrastructure that you need the GPU, TPU infrastructure, the model as a service that we have for you to be able to consume that in your application. And lastly, one of the big things that we hear from our customers, how cybersecurity is top of mind. So anything that we do here at Google Cloud, security is top of mind for us. Because we know for our customers how many of them are worried about all the breaches and the threats that you've seen that happen in the cloud. And just a few statistics, about $4.45 million dollars are losses on an average that an enterprise sees per breach. And this was in 2023 alone. 82% of the customers that we talked to and were surveyed by analysts actually saw a data breach. So it's very important for us to ensure that whatever we build, security is top of mind, security is not an afterthought, cannot be bolted on, has to be built in into every architecture that we build. So with that, I'm gonna introduce some of the new innovations that we've talked about. It is a new era in cloud networking that we believe, this AI ML, as well as some of the cross-cloud network capabilities that we're bringing in. So let's start looking at how do you modernize your enterprise application with Gen AI. We'll be introducing, and you've seen us announce, Gemini Cloud Assist that will help you design, optimize, and simplify your operations for all cloud infrastructure within Google Cloud. We're also investing in AI-optimized infrastructure. There's going to be an AI training workload. There's going to be an AI inferencing workload. Each have very different parameters from a networking perspective. For AI training, you want to be able to move massive amounts of data on a high bandwidth path and making sure it's secure along the way. For inferencing, you want to make sure you're utilizing the GPU efficiency to the best of its ability, building those models, keeping them secure, and ensuring you're getting the best inference results. And there are some of the innovations that we talked about at Google Next, I don't know how many of you were there, but the ability for us to actually provide low latency as well as better GPU efficiency with something that we introduced on our proxy-based load balancers. We also want to be able to simplify any cloud to any service connectivity. You know, one network, it's consistent, comprehensive, and secure, independent of the application type that you connect. Could be a Google managed SaaS, could be a third-party managed SaaS, or could be your own managed SaaS. And we are able to do that with a one network, 
with PSE construct everywhere. We also want to offer an open and programmable data plane that helps you integrate at the database, at the data plane side, third party ecosystem providers, whether it be for security, application optimization, or other use cases. So we introduced the concept of service extensions. We're going to extend that to gRPC as well, and Anoop and team are going to talk in more detail about it. Now, we know for a fact we can't do this all alone. That's why, fundamentally, we believe having a rich ISV ecosystem that is needed to be able to deliver this modernized AI enterprise stack in the cloud is, is important. And that's why you see us embracing a very open ecosystem from Databricks, Confluent, all the way to networking and security vendors like Palo Alto and others. Now, what are we doing from a gRPC perspective? If I have to simplify this, there are three things that we're trying to do from a gRPC. First, we're trying to modernize it, optimize it, and connect. Modernizing by accelerating application modernization with GKE and gRPC with all the benefits that you get from a service mesh perspective. And Anoop and team are going to share in more details what we are doing on that front and things that are going to be announced. How are we going to make it easier and optimize it for AI applications? I talked about the service extension innovation. We are extending that to gRPC to secure and optimize your AI inferencing workloads. This is one of the big things that a lot of customers have actually asked us. How do I integrate third-party ISV ecosystems in the data path? And I want to be able to extend it to my gRPC workloads as well. And lastly, how do we simplify all of this access? So we are extending the gRPC support as part of our service-centric cross-cloud network that enables our customers to be, have a consistent, comprehensive, and secure way to access your application, your service, from anywhere, be it Google Cloud, be it any other cloud, or even your own hybrid environments. And we're going to go into many of these details. But first, let's start with a demo. So I'm going to invite Yushin here, who's going to give us an awesome demo on how AI ML workloads and gRPC can help enable it. OK, thank you, Maninder. Okay, um, all right, let's dive into the lab demo. I know many of you have REST-based legacy services, and maybe you have been using them for many years. And hopefully after today, or maybe you're already considering migrating to the modern gRPC world. And today I'm gonna walk you through how Gemini can empower the entire migration process. And for many years, we have been using the Pesto service as a canonical example in building an application. And today I'm gonna follow the convention and get started from this G Pesto webpage. So on this web page, you can browse different categories of animals, such as fish, dogs, cats, and even reptiles. And today, I'm particularly interested in getting a dog. Anybody know why? OK, because our mascot, Pancake, is a dog. And this is Pancake's 10-year-old birthday. So let's see if we can get Pancake a friend. I click the dogs, and it lists all the dogs they have. And they have a golden retriever. So I'm going to click this one. And that brings me to the page where we have the information about this golden retriever. It's an ideal female golden retriever, and the price is just 155 bucks. It's like so affordable. Um, so I'm going to add it to my cart, and we can proceed to check out, and Pancake can have her friend. And um, similarly, like Swagger, also known as OpenAPI, they also adopted the Pedestal service as their sample application. And on this service, you can see it support, this is the raw YAML format for the, for the pet store service. And you can see this supports list all the pets, create a pet, and get pet information by ID, just like I demoed on the web page. And now, I'm sure you have legacy applications that's been leveraging Swagger to define your service. Let's consider migrating them to the modern gRPC world. How would you start? Like the first step would really be, we take this YAML file and translate that into the protobuf. But traditionally, how would we do that? We would either like doing this manually, or we would hunt around the internet, maybe find a conversion tool, and let the tool do the work for you. But now with Gemini, let me show you how it works. I just copied the entire YAML file. And let me paste it here. I click the Go button, and just in a few seconds, not even a few seconds, milliseconds, we have the protobuf. 
and it's capturing all the functionality in the original YAML file. And it even has the Google API HTTP annotations. And it's nicely commented, and the process is very fast, efficient, and the protobuf is ready to use. And now that we have the protobuf, like what else can we do with Gemini? I'm gonna copy the protobuf and ask Gemini to give me a little bit more unit tests. I'm selecting Java here because I know many of you are using Java. So I click the go button and there we have it. Gemini just generated a full suite of Gemini for test cases. And it's covering variety of test case scenario. It's taking a while, but it's generating, it's doing the work. Okay, this is the proof that we are doing a lab demo. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay, let me refresh the page <laughs> and paste it here again. <laughs> okay, perfect. See, it's generating the stop and request Okay, and we can also do Python and Go. No matter which language you use, Gemini is here to help you. Okay, I have one last cool thing to show you. Let's say you are new to the gRPC world and you are building a completely new service. You have a VM for the Palestor service, but you're not familiar with the protobuf syntax. Then we can get help from Gemini and just describe the service we like in plain English. Let's say, help me write a gRPC PyStore service, and the service should support, list all the paths, create a new pad, and get pad information by ID. And let me click the go button, and there we go. This is a well-formatted protobuf, and we can all start our gRPC journey from here. Okay, if you're interested in learning more about gRPC and AI, and if you wanna see a really working demo for the unit test generation, come to our talk. We have a talk at 1.35 p.m. happening right here in the same room, and I hope to see you there. Okay, great. Thank you everyone for the time, and let me hand it over to... Thank you, Yushin. Good morning, uh, Anup here. Uh, I'll be picking up from where Murinder left off and giving you the next level of details on the three innovations that I'm here to speak to you about. Let's start with how we are using uh, GKE constructs, service mesh constructs, and extending that to gRPC. So as you know, today you are forced to pick between gRPC or service mesh. Both of them have their own unique set of uh, value proposition. gRPC is your path to faster, more reliable releases. It's extremely scalable, language agnostic, and keeps your services very neatly isolated. Look at it as a way to enable high performance, highly collaborative environments. I'm sure you all know about that. Service Mesh, on the other hand, caters to a completely different set of requirements. Very intricate traffic engineering required for canary, A-B testing, consistent observability for the entire mesh infrastructure, and last but not the least, sec consistent security for everything that is managed under a single mesh environment. But as I said, you have to pick between one or the other today. We introduced Cloud Service Mesh, which is Google's mesh solution uh, using open source uh, Istio APIs. And using Google's uh, Cloud Service Mesh, we are able to now extend the benefits of mesh to gRPC as well. So gRPC provides a best of breed mesh solution without the need for sidecar proxies and the overhead that comes with the sidecar proxies. So now you don't need to pick between one or the other. Let's see what Broadcom was able to do with this. Broadcom's web security solution is a global 
say, a, a stack that is hosted on Google. And as they were scaling their customers, millions of customers uh, with high bandwidth access uh, into their stack, they were encountered with scalability challenges. The challenges was because it was high throughput, high bandwidth, high query rate. And then the security policy evaluations also required complex uh, routing. With the gRPC proxyless service mesh, there was a significant performance improvement because now we have gotten rid of the need for a sidecar prox uh, proxy. Improved the observability with open telemetry plugin. And last but not the least, because the service mesh is based on OSS, the gateway API provides a consistent access across OSS and Google environment. So again, best of both worlds, OSS and the service mesh on Google. I'm going to move on to the next innovation that Moninda spoke about. How are we enabling the optimization of AI workloads? I'm sure many of you have started your journey building AI applications. Today, uh, some of these innovations that we launched at Cloud Next are available on the load balancer. And so you may be feeling like, should I use a load balancer? Should I use uh, a cloud service mesh as a mechanism to enable these AI innovations? But no, we are bringing that to gRPC as well. So what are the challenges that we are trying to solve here? The traffic management for Gen AI is different because uh, it is not a web application. The queries are not as short-lived. It is massive vol uh, volumetric queries. And these queries uh, take up the entire bandwidth available on the CPU, GPU uh, resource that uh, the query is uh, targeted. So new traffic management schema needs to be built out. Secondly, the GPU, TPU availability is itself constrained. So you have to increase the uh, efficiency of the available GPU, TPU resources. Thirdly, there are challenges uh, involving the accuracy of uh, the AI inference, as well as how do you secure the prompts as they pass through uh, the uncontrolled environment to your controlled environment. And last but not the least, any new infrastructure requires observability before you can roll it out and scale. What we launched at Cloud Next was service extension available today with Load Balancer. And with Cloud Service Mesh, we are bringing that ability into Mesh and gRPC environments very soon. Now you can rely natively on the data plane for ensuring model efficacy, introducing your own choice of security stack for doing the prompt inspection and complying with your enterprise requirements, uh, A-B testing, model selection, and also inserting uh, AI for like RAG systems for improving the accuracy of your AI models. So this is something that we are working on uh, available on the load balancer, but soon to be available on the mesh and the gRPC side. Moving on to the third uh, innovation. So if you are following what uh, Google Cloud Networking uh, has been speaking about at Cloud Next in the last two venues, cross-cloud network has been our theme. Um, multi-cloud is real, and AI is driving the adoption of multi-cloud. And Google, with its high-performance, reliable, Global, uh, globally available network is a prime candidate to be able to support this multi-cloud journey as the customers expand their workloads into these multi-cloud environments. So there are three use cases. How do you build distributed applications where portions of applications may be in one cloud, the data may be in another cloud, your AI models may be in the third cloud. How do you deliver internet-facing applications using a consistent front-end stack that provides high-performance delivery and that is secure. And last but not the least, you have your own enterprise environment today. Why do you need to build yet another network for your enterprise environment? Can we converge all of that into the single network that provides your multi-cloud uh, uh, multi as well as uh, multi-site connectivity? The topic that, that is interesting for today is that distributed applications, because I'm guessing that's what you're here to speak about and listen to. So to enable these distributed applications, we extended the concept of distributed applications to service-centric cross-cloud network. What does that mean? It is an opinionated deployment model 
that allows the developers to start their journey in an isolated environment. We call it as an isolated VPC. And when they're ready to publish these services, they can just publish it into a, a landing VPC and apply consistent controls, both from a traffic engineering point of view, as well as security, to enable the rest of the organizations and the other teams to consume these applications. So build the application once, but have consistent traffic management and security policies so that anybody that needs access to these services can get access. It also prevents the need for multiple of these personas to come together to deliver the service. These are completely isolated VPCs, so you also avoid the IP exhaustion issue. So why am I speaking to you about all of this? Where does gRPC fit in? The way these services are exposed is using PSC. That's basically what preserves the isolation, private service connect. And today, neither mesh nor gRPC work over private service connect. And as a roadmap item, what we are investing in, which will be available soon, is the ability to extend both mesh and gRPC access over PSC so that you get the benefits of service-centric cross-cloud network for your gRPC applications as well. So you could have a gRPC client that um, uh, is, is um, uh, accessing a gRPC service over a PSC, and with this innovation, that will continue, that, will, that, 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 that uh, deployment model, that pattern, can be made to work. So we went through the three innovations. We'll be here if you have additional questions, but I just wanted to leave you with yet another teaser. So as users of Service Mesh, I'm sure you're familiar with the complexity of building and operating interconnected APIs. And these complexities extend beyond the networking layer. Building the API schema and sharing it with the rest of the organization is, brings its own set of challenges. Later in the afternoon, in Red Willow, the gRPC team will dwell into some of these issues and also present some innovative solutions in terms of how to address some of these challenges. So stay tuned. So with the, without further ado, I'm going to hand it back to Kevin. Thank you, Anup.